All right, welcome back to Codex. Ram Zamir is a professor in the Department of Electrical Engineering Systems and the head of the Electrical Engineering School at Tel Aviv University. He received his doctorate in electrical engineering from Tel Aviv in 1994 under the direction of Mir Feder, and he has since made several important contributions to both coding theory and information theory. He has over 200 publications in these areas, and he literally wrote the book on lattice codes. In recent years, Romney has even dabbled in frame theory by identifying properties of frames that are beneficial to applications in analog coding. Today, Professor Zamir will speak to us about this line of inquiry. Take it away. Thank you very much, uh, Dustin. Uh, you were very generous. Uh, and hello, everyone. Um, after all this introduction, I must say that I'm coming from a little bit of a different uh, a community. Uh, I'm an engineer, although in information theory. So I may be closer to mathematics from uh, than some engineers, but still there may be a, a language terminology gap. So. Uh, if you uh, don't mind, you can uh, interrupt me if I say something which is not in the right language, feel free uh, to stop me. And uh, what I want to tell you is actually about this uh, last thing that uh, Dustin mentioned, um, results that we arrive at um, in the area of frames. I mean, actually some connection between frame theory and random matrix theory, random matrix theory. Uh, but uh, the motiv our motivation started uh, somewhere else, and I will explain that. So we came from a communication, from information theory, and this is a joint work with Marina Haikin and Matan Gabish. Uh, and uh, actually, I gave these versions of this talk uh, in, in, in various cases in the last uh, few years. And each time I picked a different title, one of the title, which maybe is also uh, is telling what we're going to see here is uh, uh, something about the superiority of a creature that I think you know very well, um, equiangular tight frames. Uh, these are my uh, co-authors, uh, Marina Haikin, she was a student in Tel Aviv, a master student. Unfortunately, she didn't continue to PhD, but what she did was uh, equivalent to a PhD, I must say. And uh, this, this is my uh, colleague, and actually he joined as a, also as a supervisor of uh, Marina Matangovich from Hebrew University. Okay, so what I want to tell you about is about is uh, first, to, to show the relation, to, um, to make a relation between frames and analog coding, what we call analog codings. And uh, I will not speak a lot about applications, uh, but there are a lot. Um, it is central to our, uh, uh, the, our way of thinking is to define goodness measures for frame, which are maybe a little bit different than what is uh, common in the literature in, in various areas. Uh, so I will talk about these goodness uh, or performance measure, measures. I will make a connection with random matrix theory. And then I will introduce the two main uh, uh, results. Uh, one of them, which when I, I originally presented things was partially conjecture, partially proved, but uh, in the last uh, year, actually there were uh, big advances. This is the first theorem about a uh, convergence of the spectrum of, of subsets of equiangular tight frames to MANOVA distribution. And then the second result, which is more interesting and more open, I don't know more interesting, I mean, depending on, of, of course, on your taste, but it is about some kind of a conjecture that that um, equiangular tight frames are actually the best. And we, we give some indications for, for, for that, in what sense they are the best and, and, uh, and what can we say about it? And then I will finish with open questions. Now, in the beginning, I think it would be more for just to have a common terminology because I, I'm sure you know everything that I will say in the first half of the talk. First of all, what is a frame or overcomplete basis? 
is a collection of, ve of n vectors in Rm, where n is greater than m. Later, we will change from a Euclidean space to, I mean, real space to complex space, but I mean, the definitions are the same. And so we define the, the, the fat matrix F, which is a frame matrix, as just putting the vectors of the frame uh, one next to the other as columns. And so it's an M by N uh, matrix, and the aspect ratio is, is of this matrix we denote by gamma, which is a number smaller than one. I mean, I know that some people prefer to look on N over M and call it the redundancy of the frame, so just a parameter. And when we say analog coding is a continuous mapping that is done using this matrix from M, Rm to Rn or from Rn to Rm. Um, this is opposed, by the way, to digital codes, but I will not, uh, I will not uh, put emphasis on the, on, on the uh, comparison with digital codes, but this is what we call analog coding, just a continuous map. So uh, the map can be expansion or uh, uh, adding redundancy by taking a short vectors, uh, vector and making it a longer using the transpose of the matrix. Uh, just you know the the, the projection of, of uh, m-dimensional vectors or n on n vectors, or we can do compress uh, compression, remove redundancy by going from n dimension to m dimension. Uh, I mean, if it's uh, engineers like to think about sampling, so uh, expansion corresponds to oversampling and compression to undersampling. Sometimes it corresponds to multiplexing, <clears throat> but anyway. We can go from a long vector to a short vector by using the frame uh, without transpose, and which is basically take, taking a linear combination of the vectors of the frame. And why do we do that? So why we are, we are adding redundancy, for example, this is because we expect that some of the vectors, some of the coefficients of the expansion will disappear. We will stay with only k out of n vectors or k out of the n uh, projections. And uh, so by design, we are expanding from M to N and nature uh, reduces from N to K. And uh, to make it uh, something that is reversible, we, we, we will here assume that K is greater than M. So now we have three parameters, N, K, and M. And uh, in, in the other uh, interpretation of compression, so uh, nature tells us that only K of K, K uh, coefficients of the uh, long vector are uh, non-zero. Uh, sometimes we know which, which sometimes we don't, depending on the applications, of course. And by design, we reduce from, from N to M, and then M will be greater than K in order to have to be able to, to do inversion. OK, so this is one impairment that can happen is what we call erasures or sparsity. I mean, that some uh, coefficients uh, don't exist or disappear. Another thing, oh, sorry, I, I wanted to get to noise. But before that, uh, just formalism. So uh, we had this matrix F, the, the subset of unerased uh, vectors I mean, the indices of this, of this of this subset is denoted S, and the size of S, we, we will assume it is K, and we denote by Fs the sub-matrix of subframe, which are the vectors Fi, I in S, and the aspect ratio of this subframe is K over M, we denote it by beta. Okay, so this was about erasures, but also, uh, very important is that we assume that there is a source of noise. So we get a measurement of the erased vector, but corrupted with some noise vector. So we don't see the, the coefficients exactly. And uh, the same thing for compression. And uh, uh, what turns out to be to make sense to make much sense is, is to use least square estimation of x from y. And this will give rise to a certain uh, um, uh, inver inversion formula. Uh, but before that, so I said I will speak, uh, give a few words about applications. So this formalism can, can be related to many, many uh, fields in uh, communication, digital communication or in signal processing. For example, uh, uh, NOMA, non-orthogonal multiple access is a, 
a system where, where there, we have many users, but only a subset of them unknown in advance is active. And we are using spreading sequences like in, in CDMA of length M. So this is how KN and M appear in this problem. Uh, in, in wavelets or transform coding, we have a, a vector of size M. Uh, the representation is uh, n-dimensional, but we assume that only k uh, coefficients are significant, like in picture coding, and, uh, and the other way around in compressed sensing. So this is signal processing. And we also have applications in, 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 in time frequency channel or, or space-time channels, like a MIMO communication where we can find, again, a, a way to put everything in the form of a frame and the subset that is selected at random. And also um, new coding schemes, which were introduced recently. One of them is related to multiple description source coding or diversity source coding, uh, which is about erasures and noise, which comes from quantization. And the more recent, very recent application uh, of the last two years of coded distributed computing is, um, is a, a way to think about uh, coding of, um, of data before you send it to the cloud for, for computation. And the coding is done in order to, uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, protect against uh, the situation where, where some of the nodes that are, were supposed to compute something, they don't return their answer on time. So they are called stragglers. So there, there are something which is like erasures and noise is just the computation noise. The fact that the computation is not exact by a computer. Anyway, many applications, there are much more, and uh, this is what I wanted to say. And in all these applications, what you need to remember, there, are, there is N, K, and M, the parameters, and also there is uh, the issue of, of noise and what, what the noise causes. Okay, now, uh, in, in, in most of the talks, and then I, I like to, to describe the story of how we, we arrived to these problems. And the story is related to a source coding problem with erasures. And we use uh, something that uh, engineers like to use when there, there are missing samples in a signal. And this is interpolation, band limited or low pass interpolation. And uh, as we will see, we can, there is a way to think about it as using a frame, but uh, you know, engineers just think about it as interpolation. And, uh, and in this scheme we had, interpolation, we had quantization, and it turns out that two factors are very important, the rate of the scheme, the coding rate of the scheme, which is related to the, uh, the how many bits the, this quantization part needs, and the signal to noise ratio, uh, where noise comes from the quantizer, and the uh, signal is actually uh, the, the intensity of the signal uh, after the interpolation. So in ter it turns out that in this problem, these are the important factors. And in this problem, M was greater than K. And um, uh, we found it uh, useful to put the problem in a vector form. And this is how we got to frames. And what would be low, uh, low pass interpolation was simply using a DFT matrix where we, we select only the uh, from an n by n uh, DFT matrix, we select the upper m rows. Uh, and this is how we get the m by n matrix. And then we normalize to make sure that the, uh, all the vectors of the frame have a uh, unit norm. And this is, by the way, our assumption throughout. Uh, and and, and this, this corresponds to, to low pass interpolation of the engineers. Only in the interpolation, people like to think about infinite uh, sequence and here we are talking about taking a m dimensional vector and um, or or, or uh, taking a vector uh, in a in a compressed form or, or or in frequency domain and this is how we um, we um, do the uh, compute the missing erased samples okay so uh, uh, as I said, the computation, the formula for computation is related to least square estimation. And uh, I guess uh, uh, 
sometimes you face uh, you you saw this formula of how we we uh, take a vector and uh, get a, a estimation uh, while changing dimension using a certain uh, model which involves this the, the the matrix f and in in the formula i mean the the important part is the fact that we are taking something like the gram matrix of the subframe fs and, uh, and and looking on the on the inverse uh, uh, inverse of this uh, um, gram matrix, and uh, uh, this formula also gives rise to what we what I mentioned earlier the signal to noise ratio SNR of the system, which turns out to be the trace of this inverse gram matrix divided by the dimension. Um, which you know trace is, is, is the sum of eigenvalues and the eigenvalues of the inverse gram is the inverse of the eigenvalues of the gram. So what we have is actually the average of uh, in this, some, is this important factor, which is the signal to noise ratio. What we have is actually the average of the um, inverse uh, eigenvalue of the sub uh, frame or the, uh, the gram of the sub frame. And uh, we define something which is called signal amplification, which is actually uh, this expression put in a different form. Uh, the assumption of unit norm allows us to in interpret actually this expression as the, the, uh, the ratio between arithmetic mean of the eigenvalues divided by the harmonic mean of the eigenvalues. So uh, this number is always greater than under this assumption of, um, or the assumption of unit norm, this number is always greater than or equal to one with equality if and only if the subset uh, of the frame happens to be orthogonal. Okay. Um, but I will mention later that there are other performance measure as, as Shannon capacity and, 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 and the restrict, restricted uh, isometric property, which are all related somehow to this matrix, <clears throat> but maybe to different uh, formula or different uh, mean of the eigenvalues. Okay, so uh, I mentioned rate also. So in our scheme, we tested uh, the performance compared to what Shannon promises. Shannon, uh, when we say Shannon, we think about it as a problem of, of digital coding and there is a certain promise of minimum rate. And it turned out that we had a, a large penalty in, in terms of rate due to this uh, signal amplification. So uh, it turns out that I said that the ratio is greater than one with equality if the subframe is orthogonal it turns out that most of the time it wasn't uh, orthogonal and the signal amplification was very large. So even when you take the logarithm, you get a high penalty. Uh, the penalty could be reduced a little bit if we take beta greater than, smaller than one, meaning that, so, sorry, in this formulation, it's beta, beta greater than one. Uh, namely, we uh, take a little bit of extra samples, M is greater than K, and then the penalty was smaller, but still very, very large. Something that doesn't make sense to, you know, to recommend on, on this uh, uh, analog scheme as a substitute to a um, digital scheme. But uh, we realized that uh, there was something arbitrary. We don't have to take the M rows of a DFT. We can take a general frame and maybe try to improve. And this is how we got to the, this was the entrance uh, to the area of frames. And we, uh, I mentioned here uh, all kinds of notions, which are, I, I'm sure you know uh, about frames. Uh, frame can be tight. We can talk about coherence, about spark, about uh, condition number of subsets and, and, and singular value or eigenvalue distribution of, of, of the subset. And uh, let's see um, how these are related to, to our uh, problem. So first of all, uh, let's talk about coherence and the Welsh bound. So cross correlation between uh, frame vectors uh, we denote by Cij. And uh, the Welsh bound looks on the average uh, squared uh, uh, cross correlation over all distinct pairs of vectors in the frame. And we know that this number is uh, greater than some bound that, that Welsh in 73 uh, derived. 
with equality if and only if the frame is tight. Uh, and in particular, I mean, if n is equal to m or smaller, then of course we can have an orthogonal basis, namely the, the bound is zero. But if n is greater than m, then the bound is positive. And if we want to be uh, to go along the bound, the frame must be tight. And what is a tight frame? Again, I'm sure you know the upper, uh, the lower and upper bound of the norm of the uh, expanded vector, which are a and b. And if a equal to b, then the frame is called tight. And it turns out that if the uh, vectors of the frame have unit norm, then tightness amounts to this formula that f times f transpose is proportional to the identity matrix and the proportion is just the redundancy of the frame okay and uh, how we construct tight frames we can put a, a, a orthogonal basis one next to the other and this is how we can get one way to get a, a tight frame it's easy to see that it satisfy the satisfies the formula of tightness that we mentioned for example special case is the repetition frame and another special case is the spike and sign frame where put identity is one block and the other block is dft another way is that, so this is a way to build a, a tight frame from small blocks we can do the opposite take a big block and truncate it and this is what i mentioned before how to get the low pass dft namely to take m uh, rows for example m rows from a dft uh, matrix and this is again a, a tight frame but the question is are tight frames good in the way we look on them and the answer is actually a sad answer is that they are not <clears throat> not necessarily because we saw that we can just put a, you know orthogonal basis one uh, blocks one next to the other and get a tight frame and you know from this uh, th this way of, of building it is clear that some subsets would be good namely will be close to orthogonal but some subsets can be bad they can be very bad they can even be singular so uh, tightness is not uh, enough for what we need in our problem uh, so I mean a, a funny way to say that you people like to say that the parts the whole is is is, is larger than the sum of its parts but in our problem the frame is the whole, but we, we want this, the parts to be good. It's not, it's not enough to look on the frame as a whole. Uh, so, and just before we now start playing with uh, suggestions for frames, let's look again on the performance measures that I mentioned. So earlier we talked about, we talked about trace of inverse, actually in many problems, we don't have only the gram matrix, we need to add also some identity matrix before inversion, but let's uh, forget about it. This is some connection to estimation theory, but we have this trace of, of the inverse of the gram. And uh, if we assume that the subset is random, then we need to take expectation over the uh, uh, over all the subsets, let's say of say, size k out of n. In some problems, it makes sense to put here a logarithm. In some other problems, not. But this is a, one way to look on the performance measure, mean squared error. Another performance measure is related to Shannon transform, which is actually capacity of a matrix channel, a vector channel, which uh, there is a linear operation by a matrix plus Gaussian noise. And we, we know that the capacity in this case is related to the determinant of the gram matrix and uh, log determinant of the gram matrix and again uh, expectation over the subset and the rip which is using compressed sensing looks on the uh, difference i mean one way to look on it is the difference between lambda max the maximum eigenvalue and the minimum eigenvalue and then looking on the worst case over all subsets uh, how it is related I, I said that things are related to means of the eigenvalues so it turns out as i said earlier that the mean squared error is related to the um, uh, arithmetic to harmonic mean ratio of the eigenvalues here i put a log uh, and uh, which we know it's uh, greater than or equal to one as we said by the way small r is the minimum between k and m 
I mean, uh, I mean, which is the rank of the subset if it is uh, not singular. And capacity, which is log determinant, can be written as arithmetic to geometric mean of or ratio of the eigenvalues because uh, you know determinant is the product of the eigenvalues. And we can also play a little bit with this uh, quantity. Uh, instead of maximum, I mean, I'm not sure why I wrote originally here. Uh, I mean, there is RIP and there is statistical RIP. If it's a statistical RIP, we don't have to take the max, the worst case maximum over all subsets. We can uh, neglect the, the, the bad subsets or maybe take expectation over all subsets. <clears throat> OK, so these are the performance measures that we considered in our work. And our goal was to find a frame for which these measures are good. There is small mean squared error. There is large uh, capacity, uh, actually arithmetic to, I mean, large capacity actually means that, uh, that I mean, this is wrote, written in the reverse form. So, I mean, this num number should be also close to, uh, the ratio should be close to one. After logarithm, it is close to zero. Uh, and so this was our goal. Now, what would be uh, what what frames should we consider? So the first you know, bet or our first bet was on random frames, because in information theory, in most problems, random codes are optimal, and the, and we, we tried uh, th that. This was our first uh, trial, and uh, this is how we entered random matrix theory. Uh, which is, you know, random matrix theory can be thought of as extension of the law of large numbers from sequences to uh, matrices. And uh, if the frame is random, let's say Gaussian IAD, then also the subset is, is, is random in the same way. And it is, is convenient to assume zero mean and the variance that goes like uh, one over the dimension, which makes, which ensures that the norm would be uh, would go to one for large m and the cross correlation squared cross correlation would go like uh, one over m the rank would be with high probability the minimum between the m and k i mean m and k are the dimensions of the subset as i said and the eigenvalues of the gram matrix converge uh, I mean, this is a miracle, but they converge to a certain distribution, which is known as the marchenko pasteur distribution, uh, almost surely. And the marchenko pasteur distribution is parameterized by the aspect ratio beta, k over m. And how this is, it looks like, I mean, we have pictures of the, I mean, we have a formula actually for the PDF of the, of marchenko pasteur distribution. And, and we actually know that, like, Think about it. Typically, if we take a, a subset of the frame of the random frame at random, we we know that the, the eigenvalue would, would have a certain uh, uh, shape. I mean, like a, a certain histogram. And if this is true, then we can compute all the performance measures that we are we are interested in, like you know the uh, trace of the gram, the the. A average of the logarithm, which is related basically to the determinant. And we can find a formula again, depending on beta, we can compute the trace of the inverse of the eigen, the average of the uh, eigenvalues, which is the trace of the inverse of the gram. And uh, uh, so things are actually simple once you have this um, uh, concentration behavior that random matrix theory promises for the eigenvalues. <clears throat> okay, so we could stop here, but then we asked, can we do still do better than random? And uh, I don't know, I don't remember exactly why we thought that there is a reason to think that a deterministic frame would be better than the random. Actually, there are some problems in, in information theory that the best code is better than a random code, but so maybe this was the motivation. Anyway, uh, somehow I will, if you will ask me, I will explain later how we got to the uh, direction of, of ETFs, of equiangular tight frames. Uh, but uh, 
ETFs are frames which are tight and also satisfy the condition, very hard condition that the cross correlation of all these uh, distinct pairs are con is constant in absolute value. So in two dimensions, we only have, I mean, if we are looking on two dimensions and the size of the frame is, is, is equal to the dimension, this is just an orthogonal frame. But if we want three vectors in two dimensions, then in real space, in real, you know, in the plane, then it is, it, these are these uh, three vectors in equal uh, angles. Uh, notice that absolute value of cross of, uh, of, of uh, cross correlation is not exactly the same angle. It can be also, you know, 180 degrees minus, but but it's similar to equal angles. And uh, you know, as good engineers, what we first do is play with uh, with uh, this, with uh, our um, uh, performance measures and and compared ETF with random frames, and we saw that ETFs are always better. In particular, we chose the case of gamma equal half, namely a frame aspects ratio of two. And um, we saw that clearly ETFs were better. And there was a question, what's, what's, what's so good about ETFs? I mean, intuition is of course that it is so symmetric that uh, all the subsets look uh, quite, uh, uh, identical in some sense, uh, but uh, not exactly. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to spend time on what is known about ETFs too much because I think you know much better than me. There was this uh, talk by, uh, um, I think, Matthew Ficus and he introduced many properties. So um, what is important for us to, uh, let me just maybe, skip this slide, that they, for, uh, uh, ETFs don't exist for any M and N, they ex exist only for selected dimensions, but they seem to exist for, for all gamma uh, in the limit of large N. So if you fix gamma and, and you look on a, a subsequence of, of dimensions M and N, um, um, there is a certain bound on the size of an of a ETF. They can be at most something like square uh, the size of the dimension. And there are several designs and designs that actually brought us to, to ETFs was what we call different set spectrum. And before I get to that, let's just look one, uh, a, a one a more aspect of ETF. So ETFs, uh, are also related to the Welsh bound, but not to the mean square version of the Welsh bound that I mentioned before, but the maximum ver maximum cross correlation version, which says that the maximum absolute cross correlation is larger than the Welsh bound with equality if and only if the frame is ETF. Because in order to have that this is equal, the maximum is equal to the average, of course, all the, all the cross correlations must be equal. Um, okay, so what is different set spectrum? So different set is a, a so a different set spectrum is taking m rows of a DFT matrix, but the rows are not a band in the of the low pass band, and not any uh, set of consecutive uh, rows, but rows whose differences. Uh, generate a different set modulo n. <clears throat> and what is a different set? You know, a set that contains that every uh, difference between elements modulo n appears only, uh, only once or an uh, equal number of times. And here in this, you have these two examples of n and m, and lambda is the number of times that the difference appears. And um, uh, and, and again, I assume that uh, you know uh, better than me uh, this notion in uh, uh, group theory, uh, the notion of different set. So it turns out that, I mean, and it's not hard to prove that if you select the rows with these differences, then the absolute uh, cross correlation is, is, is uh, constant. So we have, is, this is one way to generate uh, uh, ETFs. It's not the only way. And uh, this was actually the way we got to, to ETFs because uh, once we realized that low pass is a bad selection 
uh, for something which is good for subsets, we try to understand what's bad about low pass and we realize it's some kind of engineering intuition that the problem is that the frequencies are too, too um, the set of frequencies is too uh, symmetric, too uh, uh, simple. And we wanted to find something which is as far as possible from simplicity or periodicity and, and different set is a kind of something which is far from periodic. Anyway, this is only about intuition. And uh, I think I can skip this property of harmonic frames, uh, namely frames which are generated by selecting rows from DFT. And let's see the, the, uh, the, con the big conjecture, which is the, uh, what I said, that's the thing which is mostly still open, which says that uh, ETFs asymptotically minimize the three performance measures of statistical RIP, Shannon transform, and MSE under a random uh, selection of a subset. And the selection of a subset, as I said, it can be asymptotically it's equivalent if we select it by Bernoulli, uh, Bernoulli selection with a fixed probability or a uniform uh, overall a subset of a fixed size. So this is the conjecture. But on the way to the conjecture, we had a theorem. And this theorem was published originally in, in, in PNAS uh, as an empirical observation. So we used statistical um, uh, uh, tests to prove, prove in the way that statisticians prove things that if uh, uh, we have a, a fix or, I mean, uh, aspect ratio of the frames uh, of, of ETFs, which con converges to some gamma and Bernoulli selection or fixed uh, size uh, selection, then uh, the eigenvalues uh, converge in the same way that in the, we saw for the Marchenko Pasteur, but here the convergence is to a different distribution, which is known as MANOVA. The MANOVA distribution has two parameters, gamma and P. It has a special case as Marchenko Pasteur, but in general, as we will see, it is better. <clears throat> Um, okay, so in 2017, the proof was by empirical test. We also showed that the frame doesn't have to be ETF. It could be near ETF, for ex example, spikes and signs uh, were good too. And uh, we also showed that the, uh, the, that the convergence seems to be at least statistically, empirically, in the way that the MANOVA, uh, MANOVA ensemble converges. What is MANOVA? So MANOVA is, is a slightly more complex, complicated uh, random matrix theory creature, which is associated with uh, three parameter, three dimensions, uh, which corresponds to two parameters. And uh, it was proven uh, that, that this kind of ensemble of matrices, if the matrices are, are generated by Gaussian, and I guess there is also extension to other distribution of the entries of the matrices, have a, a MANOVA a, a spectrum. MANOVA spectrum converges if gamma is going to zero to the Marchenko Pasteur. Uh, but uh, the interesting regime is when we keep gamma and beta fixed. So I want to say that in many, uh, uh, previous, uh, I mean, previous work on 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 a good frames, uh, many times assume that uh, the matrix, uh, the frame becomes very fat, or I mean, as the dimension increases. And we thought that the right way to go is to keep the aspect ratio fixed, both of the frame and the subframe. And this is. Uh, one aspect where our uh, analysis differs from previous analysis. And also this is why we, we identified something which is more general than the Marchenko Pasteur. Uh, and if we look on the Marchenko Pasteur distribution, when compared to, uh, I'm sorry, MANOVA, compared to Marchenko Pasteur, we see that uh, Ma uh, MANOVA is better. In what sense it is better? For the same beta, but different gamma, uh, uh, MANOVA is, has a, a smaller support. And also it is um, a little bit further away from the zero. 
So if we look, for example, on, on harmonic mean, uh, MANOVA is better in the sense that the, uh, the amplification due to inversion of eigenvalues near zero is smaller. And also uh, the same thing for, for uh, log debt, I mean, uh, geometric mean, everything which is related to the, to the distribution of the means uh, is better for MANOVA because you know that uh, the, the, the means inequality becomes equality if all the, of, if all the elements are equal. And in MANOVA, they are more equal than uh, in the Marche Compasture. And they are also uh, further away from zero. In this picture, you also see comparison with the, the, the distribution of uh, low pass, but low pass is, is, turns out to be much worse than, than, than uh, both the random and the ETF. Uh, okay, and this was about convergence I mentioned earlier, but uh, it's not very important. I mean, also for finite n, it seems that the convergence of, of, of the eigenvalues of ETF looks similar to the convergence of the of the statistical MANOVA uh, ensemble. Anyway, here I get, I mean, now uh, in the recent months, uh, I was in contact with Dustin. So, uh, so it's, no, it's now, it's more than names, but uh, when I presented that about a year ago, we discovered that somebody found our empirical paper and, uh, and, and proved at least partially that uh, that the, the convergence to MANOVA indeed happens, uh, uh, proven, uh, proved mathematically and not statistically. And at that time, we were both happy to see that we were uh, correct, and but uh, we were sad that somebody else did it. Uh, and this was done uh, by uh, uh, Dustin and his colleagues uh, for gamma equal half. But uh, recently, while working on a certain survey paper that we uh, do together with, uh, with uh, Dustin, uh, we were able to use the same uh, analysis uh, using moments and uh, improve this convergence, at least in the mean, um, for all gamma. So the, 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 the theorem is now almost completely uh, closed. We, there is a small uh, question about uh, the variance, which we still need to close, but it seems that uh, uh, mathematics uh, uh, um, confirms what uh, the statistics uh, showed empirically, which is nice. Um, okay. Uh, I want to mention that uh, a similar result appeared uh, much earlier. It was known that if one takes an n by n uh, DFT matrix and select both rows and columns uh, by a Bernoulli selection with two parameters gamma and p, then the, 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 the resulting random sub, uh, sub matrix of the DFT has a, a MANOVA spectrum for the eigenvalues. This is a result by Farrell. Uh, so in a sense, what we did, if we look, you look on the different set spectrum, different set way to generate an ETF, we de-randomize this theorem in one axis. So we still select the columns at random, but the rows, we don't select at random, but we select them according to a different set rule in order to get a deterministic frame, which is the ETF. Okay. Now uh, about the big conjecture. So why do we think that ETFs are, are uh, better? I mean, uh, uh, we saw that MANOVA is better than Maceko Pasteur, but who said that there is no, there is no another family of frames such that at least asymptotically, they, they will have a better distribution of subsets. So what we were able to prove, uh, and this result is also with uh, uh, my co-authors, uh, Marina and uh, Matan, Marina Haikin and Matan Gavish, we use the, the, method, the uh, mo uh, method of moments. So in random matrix theory, it is very common to consider uh, moments uh, to compute the moments of, uh, of uh, random matrices 
And if you are able to, to compute all the moments, you are able to uh, compute the distribution because using characteristic function, usually moments uh, determine the distribution. So uh, uh, we try to compute the, the moments of uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, random subset of an ETF in a way that is similar to what is done in random matrix theory, but randomness now is only in the selection of the columns, but not in the entries of the matrix, unlike in random matrix theory. And what we were able to show that if one looks on the trace of uh, F times P times F transpose to the power of D, F is the frame and P is the selection matrix, it's a, it's a diagonal matrix with zeros and ones in the diagonal and uh, according, according to Bernoulli distribution, then the expect, expected moment, this moment is greater than the this moment of MANOVA plus a vanishing term. And we were able to uh, show that this is true for any frame, not only, it, I mean, for ETF, there is equality. And for any other frame, there is inequality. And this is true for D equals two, three, and four. Now, if the moments of any frame at least two, three, and four are larger than the moments of MANOVA. In some sense, it means that the distribution of, of the eigenvalues of any other frame is uh, you know, more spread than that of the ETF. So this was our indication. And actually the proof that uh, uh, Dustin Mixon and, and his uh, colleagues did was actually extending the, the equality condition to all D for gamma equal half. And uh, then recently, as we said, as I said, uh, we were able to complete it for any gamma. So the equality condition is something that is, it is uh, already um, um, approved, but uh, the inequality is still known only for these uh, four moments. Actually, we know that for uh, D equal, I mean, moments two and three, any tight frame achieves equality, but, inequal, but if you want equality for uh, D equal four, this we, we proved an if and only if condition only for ETF. So this is a kind of indication that uh, it, the distribution of uh, eigenvalues of a uh, subset of ETF is narrower than for any other frame. And we, I mean, we, we, there are some uh, <clears throat> simulation that shows that for different values of D for different frames, but um, I know, I mean, at least, I mean, just it's kind of a way to show that mathematics uh, to, to confirm the, the, the general theorem for uh, some examples. Um, I think I will uh, skip this. I mean, sanity checks and all that. I mean, uh, when now that we know that the, the result is correct for MANOVAs, and I, I'm less concerned about the sanity checks well, that bothered us uh, three years ago. And I would like to go to the conclusions and into the, the open questions. Um, first of all, I mean, the main message of, of our line of attack of the problem is that it is worth looking on typical, uh, the typical case rather than the uh, worst case. So we don't claim that the worst subset is good, but we claim that in some probabilistic sense, the same way random matrix theory talks about things, um, uh, the behavior is good. So we, we are a little bit, uh, um, uh, how is to say it? Uh, look on things more in less strict uh, sense, uh, typ typical subset instead of worse subsets. Another thing that distinguishes our way of uh, analysis is, as I said earlier, the aspect ratio. So the we fix the aspect ratio between zero and one, and, and uh, we do not look on, on, on fat or narrow matrices, uh, which usually will take us to the marchenko pastur limit. <clears throat> um, this is the, our last conclusion about uh, lowest uh, subset moments for two, three, and four. 
uh, nice conclusion in the, in the eyes of information theories is that in this problem uh, of analog coding, deterministic uh, codes are better than random codes. And another nice thing is that Fourier-based frames uh, can be can be better. And when I say Fourier-based, I mean harmonic frame, namely for uh, frames that are obtained by taking rows from the DFT uh, matrix, which is a has a uh, complexity uh, advantage also. Uh, open questions. So actually, uh, this was an open question, and now it is probably not because we we are able to to find the, the moments for all D. And this is how we prove the convergence to MANOVA. Uh, but still open, of course, is that, uh, can we prove in what sense exactly ETFs are better? I mean, are they better than all frames in the, for our performance measures uh, or, or in a different uh, uh, other criteria? Um, and uh, from practical point of view, we, it would be very interesting to add uh, more structure because uh, ETFs are not convenient for practical applications. People like toplitz top matrices. They, they like uh, uh, locality conditions like uh, um, that uh, uh, <clears throat> there is a, con a certain... Um, sparsity in the in the matrix um, there is a, a question about the alphabet so uh, ATFs that we considered are complex or real valued but uh, they are continuous it would be nice to find a simpler simpler um, uh, matrices for example binary matrices for which we will have, let's say, close to optimum performance. This will make uh, encoding and decoding uh, much more uh, simple. Uh, I mentioned uh, applications. So coded computing is a promising direction. And recently, I submitted the, we submitted the paper with a student. And uh, I want to mention also that uh, in uh, um, in um, Neural networks, I mean, there was an attempt to regularize neural networks using uh, ETF. Uh, uh, I mean, this idea of ETF being good, so uh, to try to make the uh, the vectors which corresponds to the layers of the uh, neural network uh, close to um, ETF. Anyway, I think that there are many interesting questions that can be asked and, and many interesting directions of more research and uh, development. Uh, I think it's a, a good point to stop. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks for the great talk. Um, be sure to smash that reaction icon to give some applause. Um, I'll stop the recording here and then we'll have uh, more questions. Thank you. <clears throat>